Okay, I'm here uh, with uh, Teddy, Chloe, and uh, Bear. That's Bear. And uh, basically, uh, these dogs like to bark and uh, kind of get a little bit uh, crazy at the door. We spent a lot of time talking about a lot of the reasons that uh, have amplified that behavior. But in this video, we're going to go over how you can feed your dogs in a structured way. Now, for dogs, eating is the most important activity they participate in. They, in the wild, dogs spend 90% of their time looking for hunting or foraging for food. And when they do find food, they eat in the order of their rank. The leaders eat first, and then the middle group, and then the followers. And so what I'm going to show you in this video, how you can feed your dogs in a structured way so that they see the humans acting like the leaders. Now, basically, we have uh, Teddy, who is the Frenchie, who is the oldest dog who was here before the other dogs were here. He is the best behaved dog. He has the most, his best energy in the whole arts. And he really eats almost last. He almost waits for the other dogs to come up and try to eat his food before he starts to eat it. Now, for dogs to be within seven feet of another dog who has a high value item like a bone or food is a way of challenging for that item. It is as inappropriate for a dog to be within seven feet of anyone who has food or a high value item as it is for a human to be near another human when they're undressing if they're not their life partner. So for your dogs, we wanna create the boundaries and these dogs don't really have, especially the Maltesis, don't really have practice at restraining themselves. So by adding a little bit of structure at mealtime, we can help demonstrate that the humans are the leaders because A, we're eating first, B, we're controlling the situation, and, uh, and that also helps the dog see that we're protecting each dog. The dogs are gonna eat one at a time. Uh, but the human who is feeding them needs to eat first. So I have a little, because it's just me and, and the, uh, one of the guardians, I'm gonna have a little chewy. I'm gonna have this as a couple, uh, as a snack here in a second. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the full food in the bowls. Once I put the food in the bowls, the dogs are not allowed to go near them. Now this is a more challenging scenario to do this. Normally I like to do it in a room where there's only one doorway so it's easy to defend it but I'm pretty confident that I can do it. But if you guys have difficulty doing this later, you might want to move it in an area and just create a, a, circular, a singular entry point so it's easy for you to protect. All right, so what I'm gonna do is first of all, put the food in the bowls. And so uh, do they have, is either one of these belong to a specific dog? Mm, the big ones are Teddy, the other two. Okay, so what we'll do is, we'll, since Teddy is gonna challenge the least, I, and as the best behaved dog, he's the dog I would like to eat first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put his bowl in the food first, now, when I'm doing this, uh, his bowl in the food, his bowl in the food, <laughs> food in the bowl, uh, your authority goes whatever direction your chest is pointing. So right now, my authority is pointing directly at the camera. If I turn this way, my authority is pointing there. You saw that, the yeah. dog got up. So just that little shift makes a big difference. Yeah. And, uh, and he's holding his paw up, which I, I would recommend the guardian give a tree each time and say the word wave. Eventually, that becomes a fun command word. So this is... So I'm using the third consequence I mentioned mm -hmm. to march directly at the dog. Sitting, I can take a step backwards. And I pause after each step to let the dogs know I'm just not just meandering, I'm saying something. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes we recreate the steps that lead. And I'm keeping my authority pointed at the dog. We'll go to the second one. And again, this is a little bit more challenging because it's uh, an open area, but the dogs are doing pretty good. Now, Teddy is the one right now who's currently eating first, but because uh, uh, or excuse me, Bear is. Uh, but since Teddy is the role model dog, he's the one I want to eat first. Now, his word is what? Baguette? Uh, baguette? Baguette, that's right, because he's a French bulldog. So what we're going to do, and that's what I thought my offense, is we're going to kind of spike his food a little bit just to get him <laughs> started. Normally I don't do this, but he's <laughs> excellent. He is not the best eater. There we go. So I'll go ahead and step back and let me, let me do this. Um, I like what the Guardian was thinking, but I want to make sure this is a great video for you guys to watch. Baguette. So when the dog takes the first bite of food, each dog should have its own command word. And I'm standing over here. I'm not standing between the dogs in their bowl. Now at this point, I don't make the hissing sound because I don't want Teddy to think I'm hissing at him. So I walk towards the dog. I feel this reverse hurting to make the dog walk away. I step back and I pause. Step back and I pause. And I'm just leaning casually up against the deal. There's nothing between the dog and their bolts. And these dogs, even though they're normally challenging for it, not so much. Now again, trying to go around the, the way, and I'm watching. 
But he's gone. So dog's job is to push our boundaries and test us. Our mm -hmm. job is to meet, uh, to be equal to the task. I don't get upset when he tries to do this. Mm -hmm. And again, I was moving too fast. So try to do this, this sort of walk when you're walking away initially. Eventually, you'll be able to sit down, put food in the bowls, and then watch TV, and then just yell the words out. So we're using passive training. So when he took his first bite of food, we said the command word. Now, as soon as the dog walks more than seven feet away from the bowl, that's our way, that's our way of saying that they're done. So we take the empty bowl, or the bowl, we dump the remaining food out of it, and we will place the empty bowl back in the container, and 99.9% .9 of the time, the dog will do exactly what he's doing, he's going to empty bowls. He can't eat their food, they can't eat his food, even though it's the same food. Mm. So now we're going to feed uh, the, the bear dog, and his word is, uh, he's a sushi? Sushi. Now Chloe is this dog right here, and she's mm -hmm. the instigator. She causes them to get all fired up. So she has the, the least, the behavior that we like the least, so she's going to eat in the last position. So Bear is challenging. He doesn't know what, quite what to do. Even though it's his turn, I haven't given him permission to eat yet. Bear, here. Sit. And is this his or that? That's his. Um, that, that, this that, yeah. Bear. Sushi. Sushi. So when they take the first bite for two months, I want you to say the name one time. And be careful how you say it. Uh, and we just want to say it uniformly. Yeah. Now when he's eating, I'm not allowing the other dogs to be within seven feet of him. And they're actually doing a great job of staying back by themselves. So now I'm going to move way over here. Uh, can you still see him in the shot too? Yeah, it's more important that he's in the shot. I just don't want to be blocking between there. Now I'm not going to let him come over here or anybody else. So this gives me practice at being in charge of the food. He didn't really, they didn't, I mean, he challenged a little bit, but yeah. in a very polite way. He just kind of tried to sneak his way out <laughs> yeah. He tried to sneak him. I have one dog, I was like, bark and yeah. BS, man. Yeah, he at least he's, he tried to sneak at least. Yes. So we say just once, and then uh, after a while, when we say sushi, to him, that means food, because every time I hear sushi, I have a bite of food in my mouth. When these two hear sushi, there's no food in their mouth. So we're also artificially, like I said earlier, giving Teddy more authority because he is the dog that we want to model the behavior offer. Mm -hmm. And he also gets beat up on by the other two dogs a little bit. He's bigger, so he just deals with it. I think he's just kind of letting him do it. Shh. And that might have actually been Teddy wanting to protect uh, yeah. the, her food. This is what I mean about sometimes it gets a little bit more challenging. We have two yeah. mul multiple entry points. Teddy. And that's okay. And we don't want to tell him specifically to go anywhere. He just can't come within seven feet. So when he gets within seven feet, that's when I react and I march deliberately at him. Got I'm it. There he stopped. Step, step, pause. Chloe. Chloe, come. Now, the one thing I'm realizing that I didn't do is I didn't eat something first. That's okay because the guardians can figure out how to do this. I can do this without needing to do that. But uh, for the uh, dogs, I want the, uh, when they're practicing this, I want them to see uh, the guardians eating first. So you see, Teddy is being a little bit of a stinker here. And you see that Chloe has lower self-esteem. Chloe, come here, Chloe. Chloe, come here. Come here, Chloe. Chloe. And her word is tuna. Tuna. Now again, I don't want to hiss, but I'm not going to allow him to come over there. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Because if I hiss, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. as sensitive she is, yeah, yeah. she's going to think we're talking about Got it. So at first, for a couple of days, this is going to be a little bit of orchestration and management. After a couple of days, the dogs will start sitting and laying down and behind the boundary. Mm -hmm. When I do this, I have four dogs. I'm in my office on the other side of the house. I'm just yelling the word out. One dog, I give the first dog permission. He comes to my office when he gets done. I yell the second dog's word, grub, and she goes and eats. She gets done, she comes to my office. I yell the nice. third dog's word to eat. Sometimes he goes off the dog door and suns himself. So I don't think the visual indicator he's done. <laughs> there have been times where I go in the kitchen two hours later and my fourth dog is sitting there 10 feet away from his bowl, hasn't eaten any food, waiting for permission. Yeah. These dogs need to develop self-control. Yeah. This is an activity that we're going to do over and over and over again every day, twice a day. 
So after a while, the dogs will be on autopilot and the humans won't even think about it, but every time we feed their dog, it helps the dogs practice self-control, mm -hmm. practice the hierarchy that we're looking for, mm -hmm. rewarding the behavior we like, mm -hmm. and helping the dog see that we're being even-handed and controlling it for all of them. Yeah. Well, this is Chloe, and uh, the other two dogs are uh, out of the shot, but uh, these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have dogs that don't listen to you, so you can add structure to mealtime and feed the dogs one at a time.